For this project, I'm going to do a picture of this, I call it a rat racer. It's just a drag race car, and I've got a rat driving it. Because it's art, you can do fantasy world stuff. It doesn't have to be real. Art is fun because you can just draw your imagination. Just make it up. Now, um, I'll lead you through the drawing part, and it's okay to copy what I do because, you know, you're learning drawing skills. Artists create. I created this. And after you develop drawing skills, then you can use those uh, drawing skills as tools to create your own pictures. But it's okay to copy to learn. I draw these many, many times because I do it class after class after class. So here's my uh, new sheet of paper. And uh, just start writing here. And this is going to be in motion, so we don't have to draw a lot of detail. We're going to make a wheel that goes like that. You can practice with your finger. You can see where I'm at on the sheet. And we're just going to go right in this area. And it's just kind of quick, just like that round and round and round just like that and these are in motion so you wouldn't see a lot of detail and then we're going to uh, put the front wheel up here and th this is going to be kind of popping a wheelie I call this the wheel popping rat racer alright so where's the front wheel let's put our finger up here and slide straight over let's go just like this and over in here somewhere we want to do the same thing we want an oval and we want it leaning back a little bit because this is in motion and then we're just gonna hook on low down here somewhere and run a line you know I may turn my paper around it makes it easier I like to get my paper to where I'm comfortable now sometimes I can't turn the surface I'm drawing on. I can't turn it around. If I'm doing a portrait and it's on a canvas, a lot of times I have those canvases fastened to easels and I just have to draw with it in whatever position it is in. But, let's see, gotta get that on the screen. Um, so now you can see I've got a line that just runs all the way like this. Now back in here, and yours can be different, I'm going to make the back of the car, and again, I want this to slant. I want this to slant like this wheel. That wheel slants like that, so I want the back of the car to slant like that as well. And you can get fancy if you want to, or you can keep it simple. I like it like that, and it's a little bit early for detail, but you know I'm right there, and I think I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to put the rocket engine. Let me show you what we're working on right here. A little bit early for detail but you know what when you're doing art you can make your own decisions about when and what to do and let's see that flame would be coming this way so I'm gonna start out like a sideways V it's a triangular shape and just put a few little marks like that and that will give us the basics of it. I really don't have to put the detail now, but just while we're at it, put little marks that are close together. When you get in the middle, spread them way out and then put them close together again. It helps give the illusion that this is round. A little bit. All right, now back to the important stuff like, well, the rat racer. Okay, we um, got to get this area drawn right in here. So we're going to hook back onto the wheel, go that way, this way. I think we'll start right here. It's kind of a central point along the way, and we can take off from that point and go do a couple things. So I'm just going to go about halfway. I look at this whole space and. It's, I'm going to stop about right there. Okay. I want this to slant. I, here's my slant. That's kind of key to everything in here. So I want this to slant like that. Now I want it to turn and just aim at that. So I'm going to sketch. Sketching is just short stroke drawing. I'm going to turn the paper because I have the opportunity to do it. 
So this is sketching. It's just short stroke drawing. You're just running one line toward uh, wherever its endpoint is going to be. And that's sketching. It's normally much lighter than that, but you need to be able to see what I'm doing on camera. So I draw a little darker than I normally would. And I have the advantage of the fact that I've drawn this many times before. Okay, here's where the rat is going to be sitting and we've got to get our slant for the back seat but here's what we're doing we've done we've done this now we're going to do this so i'm going to get the slant i didn't get the slant very well on that one i'm going to make sure that i do this time so here's my slant this is the direction i want to go this is the seat and then i want to keep this line I want to pick that line back up and keep it going that way. Now, that gets a little bit sloppy in there. Uh, you know, this is in motion. It's not meant to be really refined and perfected. All right, so now about the rat racer. Okay. I'm going to, I think I'm going to put the steering wheel on here. Now, I've kind of got to squeeze him in here. I did not leave a lot of room for him this time. I draw this time and time again. I'm going to go above the seat and make what's like the front of a letter D. I'm going to stretch that out and come back around. And that's going to be the helmet. Got to have some safety gear. Alright, these will be his safety goggles. I guess his eye could be right in here somewhere. So those will go back like that. I don't know. That's probably going to get covered up. I'll give him a smiling face there. Some whiskers that are blowing back in the wind. And... If you don't get all this detail, it's okay. You can make it up. Now we want his ears coming out. So normally they'd be big and round. So let's stretch them out like they're blowing in the wind. The wind's got them pulled back a little bit. Now that's quite a be, bit of detail, so I'll stop right there and give you a chance to catch up some. Here's what we're doing. I'm getting this right in here. I've just got him lean back a little more this time. Got to get that safety gear on there. If you can't do it safely, you can't do it. And I show that in my character drawings, cartoon drawings, because, well, it's just important. Do the right thing. Okay. I'll do his body in a minute, but first I'm going to get his arm in here. And I'm thinking where the bottom of the elbow would be, and I'm just going to mark it. And I know it would go up, and the shoulder and the arm kind of overlap each other right there. So I'm coming down. I'm going to put the bend in the arm and go up and just wrap his fingers around that steering wheel. And come back down. I'm going to put the sleeve on like that and then show a few wrinkles. We'll worry about the rest of the body in a minute. Let's get uh, let's get his knee. Once again, there's the top. I'm going to come back. Go that way. A few wrinkles there. Now, filling in his body should just be pretty simple. Like, whoa, that was not good. Yikes. All right, well, um, this should be the strap. This should be the strap, safety strap, coming across like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in because it's a small area and it's going to end up black later anyway, so I'll just go ahead and do it now. All right, now here's the seat belt. And see, it's a harness, so he's all strapped in. And I'm going to color this in, too. The problem with coloring it in now is that um, if your hand runs through where you've colored it in with the pencil, it'll smear. Um, that That's a problem with pencils. No matter what you do in art, there's there's always some drawback to whatever material you use. And for a pencil, it's that it smudges and smears. But 
the good thing is pencil is easy to correct all right that's probably not the best I've done with that part but I scrunched him up I had didn't have a whole lot of room all right well you know what I'll make it work okay now for the engine well, let me show you I'm gonna do this and really this would probably be major complex but we're gonna simplify it I'm just gonna go like that and put a big pulley here give it some detail some more detail just because it probably wouldn't be a slick surface uh, let's see put a chain or a belt I might be able to make that a chain nah that don't look good yikes okay um, I've been drawing a very long time and sometimes I do things that I don't like and good thing I've got an eraser alright there's the belt I like that better for some reason okay for uh, let's see let's put us a big air filter up here you can change the parts now you copy to learn you copy you know and then eventually hopefully learn to do your own creative thinking but if you have ideas right now and you want to change it go ahead and change it it's okay there'd probably be all kind of things attached onto here with lines that run here and there but we don't need to get that much detail on there this this kind of gives the idea now we're going to hatch we're going to shade this with hatching and it's just real close marks but when i get in the middle i spread them way out and then i get them very close again it helps give the illusion that that's round it's just something we do uh, sometimes in art to, to create that illusion because when you're drawing on flat paper anything that looks 3d is an illusion all right for the um, for the wing okay it's gonna be that right there and you can change it all right let me get my direction it's going to be this way i want a nice big wing so i'm going to stretch that out like that then i draw it like a piece of pie i want to bend that line around and bring it back and there's the shape of the back of my wing yours can be different i'm very anxious for you to start using your own ideas on these things because that's really what art is all about, is getting my students to the point where they can do their own creativity. But it's okay to copy, to learn. It's how I learned. I learned by watching, well, I had a lot of different things I watched and studied to, to learn to draw. But one of the greatest influences on me was a guy that came on television on Saturday mornings back in believe it or not the 1960s wow wasn't it a long time ago and I watched that guy draw his name was John Nagy you can still see his stuff it's uh, it's on YouTube it's uh, I believe it's J-O-N John Nagy and he was drawing a boat a little boat dock and had a little shed up on the hill or you know just up on the land I, that was just so cool I decided that that day that day I said hmm got to be able to draw that someday so I started practicing well you know I don't know if practice makes perfect they say I don't use the word the word perfect on art very much but I sure have had fun drawing for many years whether my work is perfect or not it's not any of my concern I just enjoy doing it some detail there it could I could have waited till later but went ahead with that all right uh, hey we need some motion marks yeah all this is in motion so they're just little quick just whoops I'm just seeing places thinking I need some detail just marks it they show motion 
Okay, there's something on this one that you may or may not want to try to do. Some students have a lot of problem getting flames. I'm going to go very slow. I'm going to have to turn my paper. Well, I mean, it's going to be easier if I do. All right, how to get those flames. I just make a line that has a double bend in it. It bends one way and bends the other. And then I come back. I make it like a needle point, sharp. And then it comes into a rounded shape, like a teardrop or a raindrop. And there's kind of a double bend again. I come back, but as I come back, I let it separate a little bit. I let the gap get a little bit bigger. And I just do that over and over and over again. And sometimes these flames break off like that. Simple. Some, for some reason, it seems a little confusing, but if you practice, you can do it. If, if you practice, you can learn to do about anything. Art is not hard. All right, here's some motion mark for the wheels. Motion mark showing that this is moving forward, cutting through the air. And I'm going to put a couple lines. I'm going to put this line, and then we'll see where to put that one. Um, you don't have to do this little light pole. You can if you want to. I'm probably going to do it. Let's see. All right. I'm going to turn my paper and sketch. Now, it'd be so easy to do this straight if, if you used a ruler. Uh, and I have a ruler, but I don't know that everybody watching this video has a ruler handy right now. So I'm going to show you how I create a fairly straight line just by sketching. And it's just like I aim my pencil at the target, which is over here. And it's just short stroke drawing. The sketching is wonderful in that it gives me time to think between strokes. Alright, now we, I'm going to put that light pole. I'm going to put the other side of the drag strip here. Now the car has popped up. He's popping a wheelie. So you would see some of this and whenever you run into something just stop and jump and continue it on. Okay, for the light pole. We have a few minutes left. All right, let's see. I am going to do this. This I'm going to do this in 3D. If you can get it in 3D, you can just do it as a rectangle. But watch, it's not that hard. It really is not that hard. So just put a line on there nice and straight like a flagpole. Just straight up and down. Okay, come away from it a little bit and make a shorter line. bring it down close to where this one is now connect them at the bottom connect them at the top and when you look at circles from an angle they become ovals so there's one I don't know how many lights there would be I'm gonna put four it seems like there were more than three I don't know I don't follow drag racing that much but I have seen these light poles. All right. And now this is just a rectangle. Technically, these would slant a little bit, but you know, it's not enough that we really need to, to worry with it. So I want to show that light is on. And for the pole, I'm just going to bring it straight, 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 straight as I can. Okay. Now, you don't have to put it on this base plate like this. I'm going to do this in 3D and then I'm going to add a little bit of shading so I'll talk to you about that. Okay, so how do you do that? Okay, just put a flat line and then slant, slant. I don't know that we're going to see the back side of that. I mean, it, you might on yours. This is a rectangle and that gives it its thickness and then we'll just put a little curve right there. Now, if you're not doing all that, that's fine. You can do it your way. Just adding a few little details here. Now, I'm going to put some hatching shading on here. The hatching is just using little straight lines 
to indicate shading not a lot okay and that's just about it um, for the background you know we might be able to put something in here to kind of divide up the colors a little bit color balance is important so I'm going to run this like that and I'm going to make all this green. Of course, there's a lot to work around right in here. I'll show you this other one that I've got started. It just gives you some separation of colors between the sky and then a little bit of a background. And then, of course, the racer in the foreground. All right, so that's about it for the drawing. If you want to add some other details, and I could just add details all day for some reason I can never seem to get enough I can never seem to reach the point where I can say okay it's finished and I got everything I want alright now for the coloring color neatly if if there's one thing that's more important than anything else about coloring it is to color neatly because neat coloring is always pretty uh, blue green will work great on the sky I'm gonna try cerulean blue this time this is the blue green and that looks good to me but let's see what the cerulean will do it's not too much different it's a little bit brighter just a little bit so I'm gonna use cerulean on this now when I color large areas such as the sky I get my stroke going back and forth back and forth like this and I go very quickly in this direction. Now, the reason I have my paper turn is because I like to be comfortable when I draw. And this is comfortable. I could color like this, but this is more comfortable. Alright, so I go pretty quickly as I stroke the crayon this way. Now, I don't use big strokes because that creates, the, that creates lines with curves in them and it just kind of breaks the unity of what I'm uh, of what I'm trying to do uh, I'm trying to keep it all neat and uniform and so uh, I go quickly this way but I go slowly that way and there's a very good reason that I go slow because if I go quickly this way and I move quickly that way I get lots of these white streaks and that's just unacceptable the white streaks do not look good to me. I don't like them. It indicates that somebody got in a great big hurry and good work takes time. Do not rush work. I would rather see a project partly finished and done well than completely finished with sloppy color. I've had so many students that would do a really great job on the drawing and then ruin that beautiful drawing by slopping the color on. Crayons are a little bit difficult to use because just like that right there, I got blue over that line, so you know what? I'm going to make that green. How? Well, blue and yellow make green. Let's see if I can make it work. Sometimes you just have to take your mistakes and make them work out. I'm not sure what color the sign would be, but possibly black. Now, I'm very careful with black because if you put black on early and then you bump that with other lighter colors, it's going to streak really badly. And we don't want that. But this is probably going to end up black. Um, where is my black? This is probably going to end up black right in here. And then... I don't know what colors these lights are. Probably maybe red and then, I don't know. I guess the bottom is green means go. Maybe there's just three. I could have found that out. I could have searched that and found out. But hey, it's art. It doesn't matter. I could have put ten lights on there if I wanted to. It doesn't have to be the way it is in real life because it's art. Artists create things, sometimes intentionally, sometimes accidentally. 
And what I mean by that is that there have been times that I had something go wrong in a picture. I made a mistake. Then I decided, well, you know, I'm going to make that mistake part of the picture. And sometimes I change things because I just want them to be different than what they really are. It's art. You can do that. All right, that's the way I color everything. Uh, here's one I've been working on, and it's just a matter of staying in the lines and um, keeping your strokes uniform and neat. Okay, I'm going to color a few minutes. And um, you can add some other parts to yours if you want to. For creative thinking, art is not about copying, it's about creating. We copy to learn. And then after you've learned sufficient amount to do your own creating, then it's a wonderful experience to do that. All right. That's about it, except for the coloring, so I hope this was fun.